The first type of maneuver I'm going to be showing you in this video is a form of energy fighting known as booming and zooming, or B and Z for short. Energy fighting revolves around the two basic principles of potential energy and kinetic energy. In an aerial combat, you'll always be trading one for the other. In order to boom and zoom effectively, you're either going to need an energy advantage or you're going to need to create one. It also helps to have an advantage in speed over your target and good armament so you can take down your target in the least amount of passes as possible. In order to give you an example of booming and zooming, here's a clip of me flying the Yak-3 on port in arcade battles. You can see how I'm building up a large amount of kinetic energy and speed in the dive. I uh, take out that BF-109 in one pass. I zoom up and away from the enemies using that kinetic energy that I just built up in that dive. So I convert that into potential energy and then choose another target. I was going after that G-50, but the ME-410 is giving me a much better angle. He pulls up on me and I overshoot. Now I could continue to go after that ME-410, but he's giving me a pretty poor angle. My teammates are taking care of him anyway, and this zero is going after my teammates. So I choose to go after him. I use my altitude advantage to pick up some speed, and I blow his wing off. Now I'll give you a view of that in external so you can better see what's going on. And this is where I first dive on the BF-109. And that's where I kill him. I zoom up and away from the enemy so they can't follow. I gain my potential energy back. And here's my second dive. I turn that into kinetic energy. Pick up my speed. Dive on the ME-410. And I reshoot. And then I just do the same thing on the zero. And he's done. The next combat maneuver I'm going to be showing you is the head-on pass. This maneuver is extremely dangerous and should be generally avoided. However, if you should be tempted to go into a head-on pass with someone, always be willing to pull away as they may not be. Do not attempt to get that last shot and have better armament than your target. Now here's a clip of me doing it wrong. I just finish up a buffalo there, and I see off in the distance a Falco biplane. And I say to myself, hey, I have cannons, I can take this guy. I'm not paying attention to the fact that I have a broken wing, and the second I try to pull away, it's far too late. I'm not maneuverable enough to pull away that quickly. Now here's an example of me doing it right. I start shooting at my target over a kilometer out before my target lead indicator even appears. I take a few shots and move away quickly. And the poor guy takes a 37 mil to the engine. The next combat maneuver I'm going to show you is the famous barrel roll. This maneuver has a whole plethora of uses, including both defensive and offensive. The barrel roll is primarily a defensive maneuver, used as a means of keeping evasive and keeping the enemy from being able to land a good shot on you. Barrel rolls are also very useful for forcing the enemy to overshoot because it makes your plane lose a lot of energy very quickly. It's also good for preventing an overshoot for the same exact reasons. If this clip looks a little bit weird to you, it's because it was a night mission and I brightened it up in Sony Vegas, and that is me being pointed at by the red arrow. As you can see, I pull up and do a barrel roll right here, and the King Cobra is actually having a pretty difficult time trying to land a shot on me. He does a few times, but not enough to hurt me too bad. I'm also jinking, so that doesn't make it any easier for him to hit me. And there's a viewpoint from the guy that was shooting me from above, the BF-109. And I actually do a barrel roll right there and force him to overshoot. Another point to make note of is, as you can see, standard barrel rolls being performed right there. However, you can actually perform uh, tighter barrel rolls with some planes by using full left rudder on a left barrel roll and full right rudder on a right barrel roll. Now this next maneuver that I'm going to show you is called the Split S. During a Split S you're going to be trading potential energy for kinetic energy. 
The split S can also be used as a very effective evasive maneuver, forcing high-speed pursuers into huge overshoots. The split S can also be your maneuver of choice if there is a lower, faster moving target below you. In order to perform a split S, you're going to want to half roll your aircraft inverted, and then perform a descending half loop, effectively doing a 180 degree turn and picking up kinetic energy at a loss of potential energy. Let's just take a look at that in external so you can better see what's going on. You can see the half roll there and the inverted half loop. And you can see how this would be a good maneuver if you wanted to take on a lower, faster moving target. This was not a night mission, but I brightened it up anyway because of the rain. You can see I'm flying my F2A3 Buffalo with a Spitfire on my tail, and also a Hurricane that I did not see at the time. I uh, flip my aircraft over and perform a split S. And both the Spitfire and the Hurricane overshoot by a mile. Now let's just take one more look at that in external. You can see I'm getting absolutely lit up by the Spitfire. I drop my bomb load to lighten my load. And I perform a split S. The Hurricane and the Spitfire cannot get a good shot on me, and then they overshoot. Alright, this next maneuver that I'm going to show you is called the Immelman Turn. During an Immelman Turn, you're going to be trading kinetic energy for potential energy, or speed for altitude. The Immelman can be used to set up an energy advantage over your target, therefore serving as a good transition to booming and zooming. It's also sometimes useful for allowing you to attack higher and slower moving targets such as bombers. You can see I'm flying my P-47 here on port, and in order to perform an Immelman, I'm going to first have to perform a half loop, followed by a half roll whenever my wings are parallel to the horizon. And thus the Immelman serves as a complete 180 degree turn. Now we'll just take one more look at that in external. You can see the half loop followed by the half roll. The Immelman is a very good way of gaining a significant amount of altitude very quickly without losing too much energy. Now I'll give you an example of me using the Immelman in combat. You can see my Wildcat's taking a beating from that K-43. I perform an Immelman and the K-43 tries to follow my turn without performing the Immelman himself. I've already gained back most of my energy while well, he has lost most of his because he tried to follow my Immelman and then I flame him. I'll show you that example of the Immelman used in combat in external and that should be it. Thanks for watching my War Thunder basic combat maneuvers video guys. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you in my next one.